Hey guys, Andre here with the Wings Mobile Detailing Podcast. And if you guys are watching this on YouTube, we have a guest here today. We're in his garage. Do you find yourself not professionally satisfied? As if your current job limits you? The answer, entrepreneurship. Wings Mobile Detailing is completely reinventing what auto care means. And with that comes opportunity. We offer you a chance to leverage our five-star franchise business model. You will be taught everything from personal self-development all the way to business modules and tactics. By investing with us, you will be surrounded by big thinkers, successful individuals, and the infinite potential to own a business with all the right tools, training, and support. Build that six-figure income all while managing your business from your home or on the go. Seen online on his beautiful setup vans that he create. He custom build uh, detailing vans for detailers who are starting out, and we're working together as well for people who wants to get a beautiful van setup and also start business already with clients on their calendar. So here we have uh, Rauda. Yeah. My name from is Tony Rauda Rauda. Detail. Yeah, yes. Tony Rauda from Rauda Details, and yeah. <laughs> All right, nice to see you again. Nice man. to see you, brother. Thank yeah, you. Th that video did, I think we got a lot of uh, people interested in learning more, seeing actually your uh, your place around here. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're gonna reserve that for the end. All right, sounds good. Yeah, yeah but on, we're both immigrants. Uh, I'm from Brazil. Oh, you're from Brazil. And, yeah, we're both immigrants here. And it's interesting because I'm sure you have a backstory um, of how you first started your business, but even before that, your background. Yeah. How was it, man? Well, uh, pretty much, first of all, once again, uh, Tony from Rolla Details. And um, the first thing I want to say, guys, is just bear with me. My English is not the best. Oh, man, it's, <laughs> it's not that great, but uh, just bear with me. But I'm going to try to do my best for you guys. So anyways, I came to United States in 2006 and mm -hmm. right away um, I start pretty much working as an electrician. But before that, uh, in Guatemala, I started working when I was 10, year, 10 years old, pretty much. Oh, okay. uh, in Guatemala, yeah, on our countries, like some, some people, not everybody, but some people, yes. we have to start working kind of early to kind of help, you know, our parents or stuff like that. Yes. It's a different, you're bringing up, you're, the bringing up in the childhood is different than exactly. more fortunate country. Yeah, yeah. Like the U.S., yeah. So anyways, well, my, one of my reasons was, first of all, is because I was not the best one in the school. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and, but I like to do things. I like yeah. to work. It and makes you a great entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, yeah. like I started when I was 10 years and... Pretty much I started working at a mechanical shop where it was a mechanic shop. They do, uh, uh, they paint vehicles. It was a body shop as well. And they used to weld stuff, you know, like do welding and things yes. like that. So that yes. there is where I pick up uh, some knowledge on, con con on put things together, you know, okay. pretty much. Yeah. But now when it comes to the detailing, um, one of the things that I have to say is my father, he passed away when I was eight years old. Oh, yes. And, but we was kind of... How old were you when you came? Before, when I when came here, I was 18 years. 18 years 18 old. 18 years okay. old. But this is kind of how everything started with the detailing. Like, yeah. I'm a little bit like kind of OCD, if we want to call it yeah, that way. That's great with for some, detailers, man. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Yeah. Good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> but, it bugs you, but when you're detailing cars and you have OCD, you got to get it done, right? Or you go crazy until correct. you finish that. Yes. So anyways, um, once again, like the detailing is starting when I find out, you know, that that was kind of for me mm -hmm. is when uh, one of those days, you know, I, it was Christmas, I think. Yeah. Uh, I was six years old and my mom, um, well... All the kids, they used to get presents, you know, like little cars and stuff like that. Yes. But like our family, you know, they see the needs that we need, that we don't have like, we want to call it money. Yeah. So they, instead of buying me toys, they was buying me like a shirt or like a pair of uh, shoes or things like that. Your parents? Yeah. Like, like our family, family, you know, the okay. family around us, you know. So yeah. my, my like I started crying one day when I was open 
opening up, you know, a present. <laughs> only, only shirts, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, why on? I get shirts and the other kids, they are getting toys, you know? Yeah. And then I start crying. My mom asked me, you know, why you are crying? And then I told her, because I always get this. I never get toys. Mm. So my mom, in a, my mom at the moment, she don't got, like, the money or stuff like that. Yeah. But she find out the way to go buy me a toy. Mm. It was a little Volkswagen vehicle. It was a red one. So it was nice. The paint was shiny and everything. Yeah. So my grandpa, he used to wear glasses and he always was carrying them like a little microfiber, you uh -huh. know, cloth, you know, to clean up the glasses. Yeah. So I took one from him, you know. Yeah. When I was playing with my little toy, you, you know, and I put a fingerprint, uh, I don't like it. So I was cleaning up, you know, yeah. that thing with that. So that's how Is I that find out. Is that when you realized it had OCD? Kind of, pretty uh -huh. much. So I kept the big, the little toy for about five years until someone stole it from me. But that yeah. thing was like... Oh really? Right, you You're know, yeah. Like, that was your. So, <laughs> that was my my yeah. toy. You this know, the only one I will say. You know, yeah. The only nice toy that I used to have. You know, yeah. back in the days. So. And so in 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 Guatemala. That was, was in Guatemala. Gua yeah. Did, did you uh, and you were living with your parents there, and then after that was after your dad passed away. Yeah, like I still was living with my mom pretty uh -huh. much, and that. Like after, you know, five years, then I start working, you know, with, when okay, I was 10 years. years later. Yeah. Uh, and kind that of. was the welding. When uh, that's when I started doing welding, mechanic work uh -huh. and all that kind of stuff as a helper, you know. Yeah. Then I started learning things. Finally, my brother, he was able to set a shop because he see that I always keep his vehicle clean because he used to have a vehicle uh -huh. and I, I was always cleaning up the, his so vehicle. So you clean up his vehicle there? Yes. And Still then, at a young age? Yes, I uh -huh. was like, let me see, about, let's say 10, 12 years. Yeah, I did my first detail in my, my dad's car. I was, uh, I think I was 10 years old or 11. Oh, for real? I used to, whoa. Oh. On the paint. <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, that was a mess. Mm. I scratched his, all his car, like, entirely. <laughs> Imagine yeah. still, whoa, you're rubbing. And my dad was sleeping <laughs> back then. And he woke up and was like, Dad, look, I uh, cleaned your car for you. He looked at the Oops. car. He's like, what did you use? Because he could see the scratches. Yes. It's like, I used that on the bucket. It was a steel wool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was bad. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't get mad because he saw it was a good deed. I was trying to. Yeah. Yeah. But then you, you detail your uh, cousins? My, my brother's car. Your brother's And then uh, he decided to open up a, like, over there, we, at the moment, we call it car wash. But it was yeah. actually a detail shop, mm -hmm. you know? So then we start the business. And, like, still today, the, the shop is open in Guatemala as well. Yeah. But once again, I came to United States and everything. So I worked for maybe, I want to say, like, five years mm -hmm. in Guatemala. Uh, detailing cars over there then I came here and I started working as a electrician on the electrical world I started picking up some knowledge on different things you know electrical and how to put things together once again yeah. and that's when I start thinking about how to build a nice mobile detailing setup mm, which is the like, one I like have 11, right 11 12 years old no here uh, I was already oh, like when I when here. I came here oh, that was already when I was 18 years so oh, yes but yeah but your bro your uh, your uh, brother's garage my brother he's still in Guatemala, in Guatemala and he is the one who operates the garage in Guatemala, in Guatemala okay. like still today yeah yeah that's awesome yeah. and besides that when you're still there in Guatemala did you, uh, uh, would you go out and like try to uh, sell services for somebody else aside from with your brother? Or? Yeah, like I was the one, you know, was pretty much um, uh, managing the, the, mm. the shop in Guatemala. Oh, so okay. I always was kind of trying to bring the clients mm, and, yes. you know, upsell things and yeah. all that kind of that because that's how we... We yeah. used to do over there, you know. Is it more hard sale there in Guatemala? Because I know in Brazil and more of the... Uh, countries around the Middle Eastern countries, I believe, it's harder to actually. You gotta be guerrilla selling. You gotta be hard on them. Yes, exactly. It's a it's a little harder over there, especially the like you can like the pricing comparison mm. is is tremendously you know from okay. whatever we charge here and what we can charge over there is yeah. is different. Do they always try to get advantage like the clients there too? Sometimes. Or not as bad. 
sometimes the clients they want to get you know cheaper prices and mm -hmm. stuff like that you know like yeah. like for example if we say okay it's gonna be 50 quetzales is what we call our uh, money right. over there it's 50 quetzales and they ask like can you do it for 30 uh -huh. <laughs> like yeah. things like that you know but they don't value as much as they do here the work of the person right exactly in, in brazil the same thing uh they don't even if you did a wonderful job uh i think more of the third world type of countries they they still want to get something you know you want yeah. to get take advantage of still as much as they can yeah that's uh, that's what i found beautiful here right like in the u.s because everybody they, you do a detail for them and they see they see the value exactly Obviously there's some yeah. right yes i think in brazil is uh I don't know if in Brazil, I should have known something like that. I don't know if in Brazil they are doing, they have mobile detailers there. I know they have shops and everything, but in regards to mobile. It's a good chance because for example, I get calls from people from Colombia, Chile, like those, those places yeah. because they, they follow me on YouTube and oh, they nice. always call me asking me questions to help them out, you know, matches that I can, especially they, you know, the people that are in other countries, I try to help them out. Yeah. Because Likewise. I know how hard it is over there, you know, in those, those countries. Um, and you, you kind of have a step ahead here with the new stuff, because what we have here, let's say, I bet, like ceramic coating in Brazil, for example, that thing is just coming in the market there. Exactly. Uh, graphene coating, much less graphene coating. Yeah. This is new here, we know it works, like it's been proven, but there it hasn't gotten there yet. Okay, and what made you leave there and come to the U.S.? To help uh, my mother, um, like, okay. and help me as well, you know? Yes. But definitely. to be able to, to help her and things like that, so, yeah. Yeah. Like, I noticed that you can make more money here, so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and help the, the family as yeah. well, you know? Yeah. So that was one of the things why I decided yes. to come here. And when you when you came here, uh, did you do other uh, side jobs as well until you started doing the, the detailing? Actually, like I start once again, I start uh, doing electrical work here, uh -huh. and I work technically. I work fifteen years doing electrical work, but I always was doing detailing on the side. Oh, okay. yeah, and that served you well this this shop here. Right? <laughs> yeah, the electrical. <laughs> yeah, so. And pretty much, um, like, I, like I said, I worked like 16, uh, 15 years doing electrical work. I was, uh, I started as a helper, then I jumped into be a, a journeyman, what they call journeyman, then a foreman, and then finally I get to be a superintendent as an electrician. But oh, so like, then you're more skilled and you can do more things, like license work. No, like when, when, when you come to be a superintendent is where you, you have people uh, like under you to, to kind of help them out to plan um, things. Like a supervisor? Know, like a, yeah, okay. supervisor. Okay. Uh, it's a, uh, they call it site superintendent. Uh -huh. uh, it's, but it's actually, yes, it's a supervisor. Learned some so, today. I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> so I did that for about, I think it was two years as a supervisor. Um, and then um, I decided to quit from doing that to go full time uh, building setups and the, the detailing side. Yes. The reason why? Because you do. Oh. Like once I show, like six years ago, I think, I showed the first setup that I built from a lot of things, you know, that I find yes. in the trash, if we want to call it that way. Oh, yeah. Because, like, so it was I mean, then you recycling. Basically, yes, that's what I did from my with my but first. But did you start for your own uh, initially for your own van? Uh, to exactly. For your own van? Yes. You saw that you could offer that as a service. Exactly. When I finished my first van, then I post the final results on YouTube, and people started subscribing. Yeah. You know, I was just trying to show that so I like maybe they can take ideas. You know. Yes. But then, like people start commenting, you know, if I if I was able to build something for them, mm -hmm. and I start thinking, you know, yes, I can do it, but I still got my full time job. But yes. like we can do it in a weekend, you know. Yeah. But it is, have to be something simple, you know, uh, something that I can do with the material that I use to work, you know, like the work, yeah. like the materials that I use in my van, you know. 
So and people start coming, you know, to, to my home, you know, and they start working, you know, from my garage. So you've actually started getting your clientele from YouTube. Technically, uh, uh, like the majority, like ninety nine percent of the my client clients yeah. are from YouTube. Yes. Oh, and, and out of curiosity, now me being selfish, just to ask. Uh, so out of the YouTube, you got the clients, and how did you get the clients for let's say detail in itself? Did you was it from the clients seeing video on YouTube and you want? They wanted you to do their car. Oh, you're talking about clients for, for detailing now. Oh, for de no, for detailing now. Like I started when I was living in South Carolina because that there is where I started, you know, like the detailing and offering as well the uh, the mobile detailing setup. So, oh, okay. Yes. So the clients are just like word of mouth. And okay. So, but you 